Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. This video was filmed last year in November, but due to the complex nature of it, I want to be really careful with how I address this topic. This video has helped me learn not only more about my friends, but also a lot more about myself. With the UK going to national lockdown again, I feel like it's important to know that just like last year, if you are struggling, you need to know that you are not alone. Opening up about your feelings to your family and friends is a great way to find support and guidance. But if you ever think that you are unable to do that, I have left the relevant links in the description down below. I implore you to take solace in knowing that you as a person are valuable and important. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy this video and it helps you as much as it helped me. In today's video, I'll be talking to some of my friends about their battles with mental health. Just as a heads up, this video might get quite intense in parts. The mind is a labyrinth of complex emotions. How we feel on a day-to-day -day basis could be as a result of where we find ourselves in our lives, our careers, school life, our home environment, or relationships with friends and partners. Myself, I'm a firm believer that communication is paramount to develop successful relationships, friendships and communities. But communication is easily achieved when you're feeling happy and communicative. But what about when you're feeling low? This year has been tough, as anyone watching may know. 2020 has not been the start of the decade that any of us would have hoped for. And as a result, many people may feel disassociated, demotivated, alienated or just lost. The concept of this video is to convey that no matter how low you may be, reaching out is always going to be an option and that you are never a burden and you are never alone. We should be talking to some of my friends today, learning about their past experiences, and maybe you as the viewer can relate. You are never alone. How's your head been in general? That year before we moved, I feel like I was really down, whereas I feel like these past six months have been so good. Now, I've never, this is weird for me, like, last six months, never had any issues with my mental health to an extent where I think it's worrying. What about you? Yeah, I mean, I think, if I'll be honest, this year has possibly been the darkest for me. I find myself in stints where I'm really good, then really bad, then really good and really bad. And those are usually external factors, um, things which have happened, which have affected me quite badly. It was actually really hard. So I got diagnosed with BPD like in January and then lockdown happened and um, all the services kind of closed. So I just been like diagnosed with this like brand new thing and then everything closed down. So I was like a little bit, a little, a little bit confused. This year it's been, it's been, it's been all right. It's been good. I, there've been like dips. There've been moments where it's been a little like, ah, oh, crap. And then other times it's been cool, but it's, it's like, it's, it's like a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. But like when you drop in a roller coaster, <laughs> the drop's intense. Big crash. Yeah, so when I drop, I'm like, ah! Do you find that lockdown has helped you or has it been detrimental? It, help, it helped me at the start because I had no choice but to just make stuff because it was all I could really do. I guess it's, it's helped me in t like work-wise, but mentally it's given me a lot more time to think, which isn't always... A good thing. Yeah, exactly. It's been okay, man. It's been okay. It's, 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 it's hard at times, more so, yeah, because I, have, I can like turn to my family and stuff, but I can't really go see my family. Because of lockdown and like the growth of my stream, I kind of like blocked everything out and just worked, which was good, like, because it distracted me. And then like in June, I just like crashed. <laughs> Would you say you're um, troubled for overthinking? Yeah, really bad. Um, How so? Well, not so much now, but like uh, in the past I've suffered real bad with OCD, intrusive thoughts, that kind of thing. So sometimes having too much time to myself isn't great for that. I'm just overcritical in everything. I'm just, my anxiety is like normalised, so anything that's like uh, financial, any friendships, any family, anything career-wise, just anything like that, just I think more then probably the average person does just overthink it massively. Um, so like, I've always, like, my anxiety has been bad since I was like early teens and then I've had depression since mid-teens, like since I was like 14. So I guess what I wanted to ask was more of, um, have you ever found yourself in a position where you're at your lowest point? When I was going for a really bad time back in June, I'd hurt my knee and I was just like, making, I was just worried about my knee and my head was in a really bad place. And like Freya said something to me that like really triggered me and um, like, like really badly triggered me, not her fault at all. And it made me like 
delete like everything off my phone, like shut my phone off, like go into such a dangerous place. And then we talked about it after and she learned so much and I learned just how much easier things are. If I was just to say, oh Freya, by the way, like I'm going through a bit of a bad place right now, like talking about my knee is kind of distracting me from the <laughs> really yeah. bad thoughts. I remember I moved out 18, I think it was, uh, had the deposit was like 300 quid and uh, I moved out with, like I had 300 quid in my bank so all the money had just gone into a deposit to move in into like the first YouTube house thing. I remember I think it was the second month, uh, rent was due in two days and also I had 70 pound car insurance um, but like all things like Spotify, little, little things like that uh, and I had literally nothing. I had to go to hospital and do like hospital trials for like, we'll have a laugh about it, but in the house, but like hospital trials for uh, young doctors, like learner doctors. And never forget this, never ever. Like it's funny now, but at the time, no. Uh, I always remember one of the learner doctors, because it was about pregnancy tests. They had to feel round with all the, like, the lube and shit, right? It was kind of enjoying it, it was going through a bit of a dry patch. No. Uh, and I remember, just one of them, just by accident, went like really far down and I hadn't, sh I know this sounds stupid, but I hadn't like shaved or anything and I just, f and I remember nearly touching me dick and I really felt at that point, it's laughing now, but so low, I just felt like this is, no matter what can happen now, I've got no nothing, I'm doing hospital like trainee trials to get £200 to pay my rent. I just remember feeling like, what the fuck am I actually doing? When I didn't know what the OCD was, I literally just thought I was like a freak. And like, um, it drove me to the point where I just had no rest from it. So I'd think about something horrible and then I would try and stop and then 30 seconds later it would come back and come back and it would just be like, constantly battering me. Like for example, the, the whole start of my mental health going down hell is I've, al I've always been an anxious person, I've always been an anxious mess, always, ever since I, I think ever since high school, I've never had anything that I feel like, actually, speaking of it, that was during the time we talked about the, you know, the, 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 the dreaded, the dreaded Skype webcam stories. It was probably during that time, so maybe that was also something that contributed to my anxiety, but ever since I can remember 10, 11, 12, I've been an anxious mess. But, uh, only really depression kicked in. Like, I, I love skill. I always liked skill. Not the actual skill aspect, but the whole social aspect. Just when I got into the last year of high school, which we call sixth year, so that's when you're 17, 18 for any English viewers. Uh, I, I, I don't know, uh, I was about to say, I don't know why. Uh, my friend died, which was a bit of a, I, I, I don't I just, I just took everything out of me, kind of. Because it, like, it was like, it was coming up to exams. It was like two months before the exams. So obviously you've got all them stress of like your last, what you would say A-level exams, it's my hires in Scotland. So I was coming to that, which is very stressful. Then I found that my friend died. Uh, and then, I don't know, I, I feel like that's just, it just sucked everything out of me. And ever since then, I just felt like I became depressed myself. And it was even because of, uh, uh, because of like um, how he died. It's more just the person he was. And I just, I, I just thought it was such a shame because I, he was a person I really, really appreciated and it was just it was just very off guard. So I guess what I kind of want to ask is about um, how easy do you find it to open up to people? Like we've spoken about why, but how, how do you find approaching that if something was bothering you? Um, I, you know, I feel like with, with mental health, I've done videos on them. My advice is always to tell someone but for me I just can't I don't feel that comfortable to, I can say if something um I don't know like your channel's doing bad something that's doing bad I can talk about why something's bad but when how I'm actually feeling I just I, I find it really difficult I think there have been a couple of times when you've opened up um to me but it's always taken more than the first question so I say like well, how are you like what's going on um, and most people are like, yeah, I'm good. They're not, because they've got other shit in their mind, you know, like they're actually not okay. Sometimes the second question, the second, how are you genuinely, could make the difference between someone feeling that that is something where they can actually open up about and talk about, or just feel like they would just be bothering you if they'd be like, how are you doing? 
ah, oh, listen, you don't want to approach a conversation like that, do you? It was me, me and my younger brother had to kind of figure things out by ourselves. So I was always trying to find self ways, educating myself on how I can fix myself. And only later on, past two, three years, did I start talking to like my sister more or my younger brother more and kind of just venting and kind of just releasing what's in my head. Everyone wants to feel like the kind of self, not self-sufficient, but kind of they can sort it out themselves. Whereas, like you say, I think sometimes people just need help. Like there's no, there's no, what I need to tell myself more, because I'm saying this, but I just don't do it, is you need, sometimes you need help. I, I, I'd, I'd never like to, the amount of people I meet and then they tell me the stories they've had and I'm like, whoa. I used to always be like, I, I'm feeling bad, but I know, not in a bad way, but I'd be like, I know someone else is going through worse, so try, like, I'd remind myself of that. I think, I think that's a good thing to do, but it shouldn't negate away from the fact that sometimes everyone's personal battles are their own personal battles. Yeah, of course. Just because, like, I always believe that there's always someone better. There's always someone worse. So you might be having a really bad day because you made a bad macaroni cheese. Mm -hmm. And I remember you literally telling me about this before you said, you, you know, sometimes I get it really right and sometimes I get it really wrong. Um, and it's and this, and you literally looking at your macaroni cheese like it had assaulted you or something. Like you, didn't, you weren't happy. I could tell it was getting you in a bad mood. But, sometimes, but for me, I just look at it and be like, it's a bloody mac and cheese. But then that clearly like bothered you a little bit. But I think it, it, you should know as well that when you look at everything and it is subjective, um, just because you have a day where um, you might be feeling at your lowest, you should know that you can talk about those things. It's so important to just like work on yourself, figure out what's the best like mechanisms for you, and then the people around you will support that. I think that's like the best way to do it. Do you find yourself uh, in a position where you can open up easier now? 100%. Um, just, I'm just really lucky that I've met really great people that, um, that do understand. But I think, to be honest, like, like anyone's friend, like good friend, I think would just be there to listen and and understand and talk to. I know when I was younger, like I literally expected people to just understand I was in a bad place, like especially my family, like, but yeah, I guess like just communicating is just so, so important. So, so important. Yeah, now I have my therapist. If there's anything, I'm too embarrassed to tell my friends that person's being paid to hear what I have to say and you know it's confidential. I have got to the point now where there is nothing I won't tell someone, which is, I think, pretty healthy. If you're going over it so many times and then you, you, you'll just get lost, whereas if you just go to someone, look, this is the, what happened and then they'll give you something, then it, it kind of can help to just unravel. Yeah, definitely. I think out of everyone in the family, yeah, I'm the most vocal. I just have to be because now I've opened that door, I'm not going to close it. If I'm not writing shit down, then I'm talking to someone because last, the, the, the least safe place for it to be is in my head. Mm -hmm. The longer it stays there, the more fucked I am. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I need to get it out. So I'll call my brother, just vent, just get it out, just how I'm feeling and stuff. And it kind of, it just helps, you know? I think, I think you should listen to what I'm about to say then because obviously this applies to everyone, is about how you can approach um, communicating with people it should be something that you're not actually ever going to be a burden to someone and you should feel like people would care about what's going on in your head and if you do want to keep something to yourself it should only be because you want to think about that as a thought process not because you think other people don't want to hear it because they do. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're interested in hearing more about their stories, every single person's interview will be left in an unlisted link right below. Just wanna say thank you to the people who did come on today. It's not easy to share your stories, but I do feel like if you are a viewer and you can resonate with some of those, then what I've done and what they've done and what they've shared is gonna be very helpful to you, and I hope it is. I'd just like to say a quick thank you to Movember, who are the sponsors of this video. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have a video, so I wanna say a quick thank you to them. Their link will be on the top line of the description below, and if you would like to check them out, that would mean a lot to me, so thank you. If you enjoyed this video, there's a part two, so please join me next time while I'll be making some music. I'll be talking to you about what's going on in my head, but for now, I'll say thank you and goodbye.